What's up guys? Welcome back to the Ali Fusha podcast. In tonight's episode at episode 12, we are going to be talking about how to make your own home workout program. So in the past few months that I've been a fitness YouTuber, a lot of people have been leaving comments on my videos or you know messaging me directly asking me for a home workout that they can do whether that be a a body weight only workout a resistance band workout or a light dumbbell workout you know those are the questions that i've been you know getting a lot and to be honest with you guys i've been replying to them that oh yeah sure i'm gonna make another video i'm going to give a dumbbell workout a resistance band workout but whenever i would actually what do you call this um think about or like try to make a script or try to make the actual program for that video i'd always be taken aback because you know there's that side of me like okay i understand that generic programs work for almost everybody especially if you're not an elite athlete or like actually if for most people that are you know stuck at home that aren't powerlifters bodybuilders weightlifters any program for general fitness is definitely going to work so whatever program i wrote down i might write down in the future or i could have done in the past I'm pretty sure it would have helped but there's that side of me that um i want to educate so (laughs) that's the main point of this podcast or the main point of this channel anyway i mean as much as i want to be entertaining in some videos sure the main point of the channel is to really um educate them and then of course i'm not going to say that i'm the i'm the smartest guy in the philippines smartest coach I'm, i'm not going to claim that at all whatsoever it's just that i do know a lot of things uh when it comes to fitness and of course there are a lot of people that can definitely benefit from the information that i've gathered hence okay enough talking about me but hence the point of this video i want people to help be able to help themselves to make their own programs because again um there's a lot of no one says there's a lot of variables to consider when it comes to making your own program. So if you decided to <laughs> click onto this podcast, hoping to be a quick and to give a super specific program, uh, you might want to click off because this is going to be a long uh, video or podcast. And actually, you know what? Sorry. One thing that I've noticed for myself, there are some videos that I've made, uh, as, in, as in videos and not podcasts, that are actually longer than some podcasts. So the line between or the difference between my podcast and my videos, I'm not too sure whatsoever. I guess I'm going to classify a podcast as someone, as, as a, the type of medium that when I'm talking to somebody, interviewing somebody, or if I'm just talking without the real script uh, in the, uh, to the camera, to, to you guys. So uh, that's why right now, just laid out here, I have some the basic points that i do want to share with you guys all right so to get to the main point how to make your own workout uh, specifically for home and since everyone's going to be oh mostly everyone's not going to the gym and you are going to be doing your workouts at home so specifically a quick disclaimer this is definitely not going to be ideal these recommendations aren't um ideal for the powerlifters, the bodybuilders, or the elite athletes, it will definitely benefit you guys to some extent, but it's not to be taken as the full-on program or the full-on structure uh, immediately. Of course, there are a lot of things that are going to be individualized for you as somebody who has very specific goals. So this podcast is definitely for the more average Joe, somebody who just wants to live a more active or a healthier lifestyle. Okay, so the first point I want to talk about is how, like the specific um uh, movement patterns that we'd want to go for and if you guys aren't familiar with what a movement pattern is or like what the movement patterns are it's going to be the push pull hinge squat lunge twist and carry so those are seven movement patterns and within the push there's obviously the horizontal push the vertical push and for the pull there's the horizontal pull and the vertical pull so if you want, you can consider consider them to be nine movement patterns, but to keep it simple, let's, talk, let's call it seven. So it's important to ensure that in your program, you have to have these uh, movements, like any variations or any yeah, ex- any exercise variations of these main patterns to be involved because a lot of people and i'm pretty sure you guys have noticed this <laughs> um if you were to in like in gyms in the past a lot of the gym bros that you would see the only movements that they would be doing would be the push and pull and that's why there's the perpetual joke of people skipping leg day um and hence these guys you know have these chicken legs and they only do bench press barbell rows lat pull down well, military press overhead press whatever you want to call it they only do those movements they call they only do these upper body movements so i mean great for them that their upper body looks great but if you're somebody who wants a 
general healthy lifestyle you definitely can't ignore the other movements so if somebody if that bro is already pretty efficient in the pushing and pulling uh, category they would definitely want to hinge to squat lunge twist and carry so these again these are very general movements uh that's the point they are supposed to be meant to, uh, they are supposed to be described as general movements and you're going to pick you're going to pick these specific exercises that you'd want to fall under so again i know this is going to be a long episode but if you really do want to learn how to make your own program so that you don't hire a coach of your own this video i really believe is going to help you this podcast this episode i believe will provide some value for you guys okay so let's talk about let's try to like talk about it in categories so the first one would be for the body weight only second one would be for the resistance band and then the third one would be for the dumbbell people so i'm really just going on the flow with this hopefully i'm going to be that you know <laughs> charismatic or like that smart quick-witted to give you guys a full on episode all right so with those movement patterns in mind uh, hopefully i'll flash them on the screen right now let's talk about for the people that are at home and can only do body weight workouts everyone knows let's start to the easiest one the people the movement that everyone knows there's always going to be the push-up no one can deny that the push-up is definitely a great movement a lot of actually you know i'll take that back i'll retract that statement because there are a lot of people this is especially true for the more intermediate or advanced uh individuals they'd always look oh man let's just a push-up like you can't really do much with that uh, it's just it's such a beginner movement yes it's a beginner movement but let's not what do you call this um let's not like shove it away it can still provide a lot of benefit uh, actually joint wise so example you're going to, if you talk to a lot of uh, a, uh, po- a power lifter or a weight lifter you're going to probably half the half of the population has had some elbow or shoulder issues in the past i'm going to say that definitely if they are not able to do bench pressing uh doing push-ups will definitely be a better option because there is the a great benefit that the push-up has over the bench press is the freedom of your joint so that's going to be the closed chain or versus open chain kind of movement but without going too specific it's just that it's a more it's a more liberating movement as opposed to such a fixed movement when it comes to the bench press. I know I'm going to off a quick tangent right now, but I'm not saying that the bench press is bad. I'm just saying that there, uh, it's going to be, it's not the wisest decision to shove the push up away. Like it's, it's still definitely going to help you in your programming, even though if you're somebody who benches 300, 400 pounds, ha- ha- still include the push ups if you're not able to bench press nonetheless. So, okay, so we're going back to the ball weight. There's going to be the push up. So at least that's going to answer for your pushing, uh, for the push movement pattern. So that's one. For the pulling, this is the one that's going to st- uh, like going to be the toughest one for a lot of people. If you're really going to be doing body weight workouts at home, and you don't have a pull-up bar or something similar to that, your pulling uh, options are almost zero. Uh, again, there are a lot of creative ways to go about that. Where that's, that can be a separate video where I, or like you guys can search it online. There are a lot of um, like DIY ways, but I'm not going to like talk about those ways because it's, it's going to be too long if we were going to talk about uh, like pull operations that you can do with just whatever equipment you can find at home so that's i'm going to immediately say that that's the drawback if you're going to be aiming for a pure um pure body weight uh what do you call this no sorry for a pure no equipment uh, strategy at home that's definitely something that um i'm not gonna lie if you don't have if you're going to be doing pure body weight your upper back and you don't have a pull-up bar sorry your upper back is definitely not going to progress as much as the other movements. So, um, but there, but of course, that doesn't mean that there's nothing we can do. There are a lot of um, body weight. There, I know this is gonna sound lame to the more advanced people, but you guys know what a rear delt fly looks like a dumbbell rear delt fly imagine doing that but without the dumbbell again this is going to be too easy for some for some people but for the people starting out i am telling you if you do the dumbbell rear delt fly i'm sorry if you do the bent over rear delt fly without any equipment and if you do it with quality reps where like with time under tension pop uh, it's, what do you call this a controlled cadence controlled tempo etc and then higher reps you're definitely going to feel the upper back uh, and then of course there are different variations i'm not going to list them all actually no sorry i am going to list them all i'm going to enumerate a good number of them but um let's say if you made it this far in the video which is like a few minutes in like the man um i'm going to link something down below i'm going to link a probably a view only google sheet for you guys to view 
only <laughs> the exercise selections that I'll be giving you guys because of course I'm going to be talking about them right now in this video but if you just want a quick review like oh what did coach say again when it comes to this and that you can just uh, definitely view that sheet and hopefully that's going to be a good reference uh, point for you guys but anyway so I was talking about the dumbbell rear delt fly uh, sorry the rear delt fly with just body weight there are other variations about that similar to that that's definitely going to help you is it the best option no obviously not but it's it's the best one that you you have with your uh, available uh, what do you call this implements or available equipment which is nothing so that's going to be answering for your pull even if it's not a real pull that's going to be it already for the hinging um that's going to be tough as well but you can definitely definitely do movements like a single leg romanian deadlift which is good for your balance with regards to it being great for your um hamstring um ankle health or hip development um yes it's going to help you but not um i guess okay you know what i just realized i'm going to just list them down like mention them right now but i want you to already know that not every all of these body weight only movements they're great but to an extent you know so before i get too ahead of myself for the hinging there's going to be the single leg row uh, romanian deadlift for the squat obviously there's going to be the squat uh with a body weight squat if you want to call it there's like the prisoner squat the vmo squat where it's, which is where your heels are elevated the lunge or here the lunge is going to be your best friend actually because there are many variations that you can do there's going to be the forward lunge the reverse lunge deficit lunges those are all great movements then the twisting um i mean it's up to your creativity but the simple ones where you're doing russian twist on the ground etc and you're gonna with regards to carrying that depends also on how many uh how much space that you have or what equipment that you're able to use whether that be a dumbbell i'm uh, sorry whether that be a uh, what do you call this a backpack a water jug etc whatever you can carry and just walk across a uh what do you call this set set path that or like your hallway actually so all of these movements again are all great and good it's just that, as I mentioned like a few minutes ago, these movements are going to be really hard to progress with. Um, or like actually, these movements are going to be really hard to, to continually progress with. Because if you're somebody starting out, um, doing all of these movements, the push, pull, hinge, squat, lunge, twist, and carry, all of them are great, but you'll probably get to a complete stop or a halt uh, or like a plateau, to use the phrase, probably for some people it might be one month in for some people it might be one year in it's very there's a lot of uh, individual factors that are going to affect that uh but nonetheless if you still st you still should strive to get better at these movements there are definitely harder variations to go by and i guess to keep things short if we're going to talk about the push-up there's definitely the regular push-up oh if you've already done 20 or 30 push-ups and it's too easy for you you then might want to introduce a deficit push-up a deficit push-up is where in your range of motion is going to be greater because you're elevating your hands creating more space for your chest to go down so that's something for you to consider um another thing is example like i, I mean i know we talked about body weight only or like no equipment but if you were to put a weighted backpack something like that uh like those are like some factors that you can do to make things a, little, a bit more challenging and that's exactly why at the start of this episode i really made sure to say that this is definitely not for the more the more ambitious individuals that have more ambitious goals if you're somebody that wants general health general fitness um one in the same or general fat loss these are definitely great because when it comes to fat loss as much as beneficial as strength training will be if you're just consistent with your diet with your like you be with being in a caloric deficit etc and if you're continually living an active lifestyle this method like doing these movements are really going to be good for you all right so that's something for you guys to look out for that uh have the right expectations with the with the have the appropriate um expectation with whatever implement you're going to be using okay um i realized that doing all of these movements <laughs> or like they're listing all of these down is going to take a long time so i'm going to like speed through it and then just really go through the principles that i want you guys to have behind it because there are a lot of things to um mention there so if you're going to have resistance bands the only difference or the only additional thing like the only significant additional thing that will add that will be added to your body weight workouts would be pulling motion like pulling motions uh, remember a while ago i said that the biggest drawback of no equipment body weight training is that your upper back is going to be limited to just you know body weight 
uh, like our shoulder rotations, etc., or like re uh, retractions, which is great, but to an extent, these ones are going to give added load. So whether that be with the resistance band, uh, row up rowing, resistance band, face pulls, uh, lat pullovers, etc. Those so those are really great motion uh, movements. And again, um, I'm I'm going to list that down uh, in the description. I'm going to link it down in the Google sheet, the view, the view only sheet for you guys to look at instead of if in case you forget everything that I'm mentioning here. All right, so for me, uh, that's basically the biggest significant. That's the biggest difference that the resistance bands will give you. If you're somebody who has, you know, like advanced strength already, you can use the resistance bands to add on to the additional or to the already existing movement patterns. Uh, so, example with the push up, to use the push up as a generic example, you can attach that to your back to make sure that the top part of the lift. Oops, sorry, push the microphone. The top part of the lift becomes harder because here the band is stretching out a bit more so stuff like that but again if you have a resistance band um as i actually yeah, there are two things the two biggest things that the resistance band will give you would be upper back development or upper back variations and glute work uh, because it just it helps a bit more with adduction when you're bringing your legs out uh, further out from one another so you can do movements like banded hip thrust banded pull throughs again these will all be down in the google sheets um when it comes to the dumbbells okay these are great uh what do you call this these are definitely going to add a lot more variation to it uh to name a, some like an, a key addition would be the overhead press because with just the body weight workouts for most beginners uh, you're only going to be limited to push-up variations i mean sure there's a harder like bike press or handstand uh press but that's going to be too difficult for most people which is why if you have dumbbells that's a great addition to do a single arm dumbbell overhead press or a push press or like those movements are going to be really great as well as my favorite something that we've been mentioning already how many times in this episode would be the rowing because now you can do dumbbell rows then there are many variations that go to go about it there's the bent over dumbbell row the classic one or you can do the single arm where you're planting your arm on a, on a platform many many variations so um obviously uh, i uh, there, again i'm saying so many things that can be like said in like three or four minutes by just looking at the list uh but these are just you know the the, the key things that i want to share with you guys the resistance uh, obviously you can get far with the body weight but uh but having resistance bands and dumbbells will really be a good thing uh for progression and for variation because as uh, generally speaking even though if variations aren't the best thing that or like the thing that's going to make you progress because the best thing that's going to make you progress is your consistency but even though that those are like those like having those equipment what was i saying i got lost in my consistency <laughs> whisper what does i say uh, you know what? I, re I completely forgot. But nonetheless, <laughs> shoot. This is why I should have like a better flow for my future episodes. But nonetheless, for your body weight, uh, resistance band, and double exercises, the same thing holds through that your progression is really what's going to help you like continually progress. Because as I mentioned a while ago, if you don't, um, what do you call this? If you don't progress, or like, sorry, did I say that a while ago? See, I'm really going to be at a loss right now. Full reset with whatever option, body weight, resistance band, or dumbbell option that you go for. Your progression, how you progress with these movements will dictate how long will you actually be progressing. I know that sounds very obvious, but it's something that has to be said because um, if you're going to be doing the same routine, same number of sets, reps with weight, same rest intervals, you're going to maintain a lot of the progress that you've already gained which is not necessarily bad for a lot of people if you're so if you're just uh if you're a 35 40 year old that you know just wants to be generally fit doing that is going to be absolutely fine i can't imagine any drawbacks from it but if you're somebody whatever age you are that continually wants to see more progress whether that be fat loss um aerobic capacity brute strength muscle size then these are these are uh, this is when uh this part becomes more important where progression matters so much you have to make sure that in your workout there's uh, like in your in the timeline of your workouts there's a general trend 
of intensity or work or capacity being increased because again if you're going to do the exact same thing the chart is just going to be completely flat and again that's not bad but if you want goals you have to make those steps so make sure that the general trend of your program of your progress is still going to be in an upward scale okay now to be a bit more specific with regards to the number of sets and reps so now we talked about the principles about picking a the exercise or like which exercise you can actually do which one is going to be better for you again everything is going to be in the link down below the number of sets reps and rest i would say or the intensity i would say doesn't need that much variation or like doesn't need that much of uh, like variability because doing four sets is generally better than three sets again that's very general but the difference between doing three sets and four the the gravity or like the severity is that the right word like the the difference like on how much better doing four sets is compared to three it's hard to put that on paper i mean sure we can say that oh you did um three by eight versus four by eight sure that's a it's eight more reps that you're able to perform is that going to immediately contribute to something like that's going to guarantee success in the future maybe maybe not maybe maybe not but nonetheless um i don't want you guys to be super duper strict about that um but don't take that um don't take that suggestion or don't take that suggestion of a mindset to have as something to, to, to dictate everything like oh fusha said that oh i can just do three sets and that's going to be perfectly fine i don't need to grind out the fourth set again these are recommendations are for general people so if you want if if you want a solid takeaway from this doing anything from three to five sets of any movement at any point of your day or like any point of the workout is going to be absolutely fine uh, again uh, it, things are kind of going to be arbitrary for you guys because what's important is that you just do the work these specifics aren't really super duper important as opposed to making sure that you get the work in so with regards to the number of sets a general recommendation is anything from three to five that can be for whatever movement you're doing whether that be your squats lunges or the hinge the rear delt flies anything all of those are going to be fine so then the number the next thing would be the number of reps number of reps and intensity go hand in hand the conversation of one can't be done without the other so when i say intensity i literally mean how hard or how difficult the movement is uh with regards to like percentages like bot like barbell percentages that's a different conversation very similar but you know somewhat different because now we're talking about we're in the context of regular dumbbells or what do you call this resistance bands etc so generally speaking i don't want all of your sets to be to complete failure um i'm not saying that training to failure is a bad thing to do it's just that if you were to make every set of yours i recommended three to five sets if you were to make all of those sets to failure i'm pretty sure th that the quality of each set is going to regress each time and i'm pretty sure if you do this for weeks on like weeks one to weeks five or six you're definitely going to notice i already call this some burnout in your system and just you know overall overall fatigue which is something that we wouldn't want to experience especially early on in your programming okay so since i mentioned that i don't want you guys to go balls to the wall at each set how hard should you go a general recommendation is going to be aim for two to five reps in reserve and i know that's a wide range you can actually go for one but generally speaking most of your sets should be should be uh like done until two to five reps of uh, before failure so what do i mean by that so let's talk about let's talk about the push-ups the, the constant example if you feel that if you were to max out in a set like when i say max out do as many reps as you can and you're going to stop at 10 you're an individual that can only do 10 never don't do 10 at all like in your set or it's like don't repeatedly aim to do 10 because you're probably going to fail instead if you're going to follow the recommendations that i made that i want you to stay within two to five reps before failure if 10 is your max you might want to stay uh within six to eight or like sorry like if you want to be very specific um five to eight reps between uh like per set of your push up so you might want to aim for like if you want to go for the harder days you might want to aim for eight but if you want to go for a higher number of sets let's say you want to aim for the five sets uh then maybe you want to go for just five or six reps because that's going to be how do you call this less intense because if you were to aim for such an intense set at the start you're probably not going to get the same quality or the same amount of volume that you'd want moving forward so again um three to five to quick rundown 
three to five sets is a, gen a good gen general recommendation for every movement for the number of reps uh, it's going to be two to five reps in reserve before you fail that's a good good recommendation that can answer for almost every movement again these are just recommendations don't treat this as set on stone because i'm i'm saying that maybe yeah maybe doing two sets of something is going to be fine uh but that doesn't mean but for a general trend if you want to track things a bit more specifically three to five sets is going to be good now the last thing that i would do want to talk about would be frequency how often are you supposed to work out ask yourself how often can you actually work out um, some people can say that oh I can work out seven days a week but does that mean should you work out seven days a week uh, that really depends on the like how you actually structured everything if you do want a full body program um, example you, you want to do every movement pattern at every single workout I mean it, it sh there, there's no one stopping you you can definitely do that it's just that you have to make sure that the frequency is not crazy not six days a week not seven days a week um, again there's so many factors i can continue to talk about this for so long but of course that's going to be too long of an episode and you guys might be bored by that already so it's better to just a good recommendation again there's a lot of variability but a good recommendation is going to be aim for a minimum of three to five times a week again this is going to be great for a lot of people so quick rundown <laughs> I swear this entire episode could be done in two minutes. You know what? Let me let me try to make it in two minutes. Uh, to those of you who stuck around to the end, make sure that you have, again, quick summary. Make sure that you in each workout that you have these movement patterns: the push, the pull, the hinge, the squat, the lunge, the twist, and some form of a carry if you have the means to do so. With regards to actually programming each one of those movements, you are going to aim for a general recommendation of three to five sets regards to reps and intensity two to five reps in reserve before you fail Re with regards to frequency three to five times a week and i'm pretty sure that if you maintain this for the longest time you are definitely going to see some progress now um how far that progress is going to be it's entirely up to you because of course everyone has different backgrounds everyone progresses a bit differently nonetheless when you see progress slowing down that you're not able to do the harder variation you're not able to do more reps in total in the workout you're not able to rest a bit shorter stuff like that then that's when you might want to consider going for other options um i mean you might want if you're somebody who chose for the body weight only path then maybe dumbbells are going to be great if you're somebody who just you know are felt limit, limited by the dumbbells alone then maybe resistance bands are going to help you out so th th again there are a lot of variation like, there's a lot of what do you call this factors that are going to affect what move you should make moving forward so yeah, I guess that's the entire episode already. I'm not sure how long that was. I'm pretty sure that sounded boring for a lot of people. But to those of you who really wanted to learn with how to program it for yourself, if you guys don't want to hire a coach, all of these factors are definitely going to help you. Like All of the things that I mentioned are definitely going to help you moving forward. So anyway, that's the episode. Um, I'll see you guys in the next one.